Hello come back to the third lecture, about how to write research papers. I would like to encourage you, to talk to other people. Please listen to different opinions. In the first two videos, I explained how to write the abstract and the introduction. This video explains the second section of a research paper. This section is usually called related work. Sometimes, the authors call this section background. This section is approximately 10% of the length of the paper. If your paper has 8 pages, this section should be a little shorter than 1 page. What is the purpose of this section? Why do you need to write related work? Why is this the second section of the paper? Please notice that this section is called related work, not related works. In this context, work is not countable. If you write related works, readers immediately know that you do not have a good grasp of English, and will have doubt about your ability to express yourself. You can say related work or existing methods with S after the word method. Methods are countable. Work is not countable. You need to provide the context of your work. What has been done? Who did it? For these reasons, this section cites many published papers or books. Your paper should inform readers of the state of the art. What methods do people use now? This section explains the deficiencies of the existing work. Are existing methods too slow? Are they inaccurate? Are they too specific and cannot be generalized? Are they too expensive? This section often describes metrics for comparison. For example, if the deficiency is the speed, then speed will be used for comparison. If the deficiency is cost, your method should have an advantage in cost. Thus, you should consider the deficiency and the metrics together. If you are a beginning researcher, you need to use this section to establish your credibility. You need to demonstrate that you know what is going on. You should convince the readers that you are a member of this research community because you know the work already done in this topic. For this reason, you have to pay proper attention to this section. If this section is not well written, experts in this topic will stop reading because they think you are not qualified to write a research paper about this topic. You need to carefully select the papers you cite. These papers reflect how you think about your own paper. You are selecting your peers. If you cite a paper that is considered a leader in this topic, you are informing readers that you expect your work will become the next leader in this topic. If you select a paper that is unknown in this research community, you do not expect your paper to become widely known. You should cite the papers in the venue, where you will submit your paper. Let's imagine you are writing a paper, to be submitted to a conference or a journal of robotics. You should cite papers in that conference or journal, or related conferences or journals. If you do not cite any paper in that area, readers will likely reject your paper, because they think your paper does not fit in the area. The number of references should be approximately two to three times the number of pages. If your paper has 10 pages, then citing 20 to 30 papers will be about right. Let's see some examples. In this example, the authors call the second section related work and background. Please notice. It is related work, not works. There is no ass. You can see that this paper cites some references. Each reference is explained by one or two sentences. This is another example. Again, the title is related work, not related works. As you can see, the paper provides short summaries about the cited papers. Sometimes, the authors divide related work into different categories. In this example, the authors classify related work into object detection, action recognition, 
and some more not shown here. As mentioned earlier, this section often describes the deficiency of existing work. This example highlights the description about the deficiency. It says, matching becomes significantly harder. This is another example. It describes the differences between existing methods and the proposed method. It says, unlike our method, and whereas we focus on. This is another example. It says, one existing method requires a good initial alignment. Then, the paper says, in our work, we leverage to indicate the difference. In this example, the authors say existing methods will achieve suboptimal accuracy. This example says, it is difficult for existing methods to overcome the pixel level differences. Then, the paper says, in contrast to most existing feature level approaches, our method focuses on. As you can see, this section needs to explain existing methods and compare the new method with existing methods. In this section, the comparison is usually qualitative, and no numbers are presented. Quantitative comparison will be presented in section 4 after you describe the details of your method. Some papers have tables showing the differences between existing methods and the proposed methods. In this example, the authors use three columns to classify the methods, the different purposes, using clients or servers. The proposed method is shown in the last row. In this example, the authors use a few sentences to describe several types of methods. The proposed method is also in the bottom row. How should you describe the related work? First, state the facts. What has been done in an existing method? What results does it get? You should appreciate the work done by others so that you can conduct this research. You should acknowledge the contributions of the existing methods. Please take a positive tone, and do not use any negative or emotional words. You can say things like this method can be improved. Do not say anything like this method is terrible and stupid. This is not professional. Citing websites is not always perceived well because websites may change. If a reference changes, Readers cannot find the reference and this defeats the purpose. Next, let's see how references are written. Let me first show you some examples. All of them come from journal papers, because the publishers have staff formatting the references in specific ways. These journals are the ACM Transactions on Design and Automation of Electronic Systems. The IEEE Transactions on Cloud Computing The IEEE Multimedia What is the purpose of the references? Readers may want to study more about the topic by reading the references. Please understand that these are references, not prerequisites. You should not expect readers to read the references before reading your paper. Your paper should provide sufficient background information for readers to understand your paper. Some readers may glance at the references before reading the paper, in order to gain knowledge about the topics relevant to your paper. Many beginning researchers do not pay enough attention to references, because they think this is the last part of papers and nobody would notice. This is not true. I often read references, before I read a paper. I know many people do the same thing. Furthermore, if a reader is an expert in this topic, the reader may want to check, whether you cite important papers in this topic. It is extremely important to have a strong positive impression of references. Let's examine the components of each reference. Each reference starts with the list of authors. The title of the paper is after the authors. Then, 
It is the place, where the paper is published, which conference or which journal. If it is a book, which publisher. The next piece of information is the year, when the cited paper is published. You need to be careful here. If all cited papers are many years ago, readers will naturally ask whether you are following recent progress in the topic. Make sure you carefully examine the years of the references. Include recent methods if they are relevant. The pages of the references are also included. The last part of this video explains how to download citations from publishers. When you find a paper in IEEE Explore, you can click the Cite This button. A window will pop up. It gives you several options of formats. You can download the citation in plain text, BIB text, RIS, or RIFWORKS. In ACM Digital Library, you can click the quotation mark to download the citation. ACM provides three formats, BIB text, EndNote, and ACM reference. In Arxiv, you can download the citation in the BIB text format. In Springer, you can click the button Cite Chapter to download the citation.